my name's Connor. Thanks for uh, thanks for seeing me tonight. That's great. Thanks, Randy. Pleasure. Um, why don't you tell me a bit, bit about your day? Just to start. A bit about my day. I woke up in my own bed, which is rare at the moment because I'm I've been on tour for maybe three months so far. But this is one of them because it's the yeah it's the London show tonight. So woke up in my own bed and we've got Tessa over who I just played um, played so long with. Um, she's she's amazing. I've done quite a few bits with her, but she's over only for two days. So I've got. A, I had a last night and tonight for, for those two gigs, which has been awesome. You've recently released The Ground Running. What can mm -hmm. you tell me about, how is it to write that? What went, what went really, into that? It was, yeah, it was quite intense, but in like a really nice way. I think I've been, it's the first album that we've done without any A&R, because um, it's an independent release. So instead of having like a small panel of, people being like, we think you should do something like this. And it's so hard when you're, when so few people are giving you feedback. So if four people are giving you feedback, suddenly even like the tiniest change in like the expression in their eyes becomes really important. So if you're playing a track to them and they just look like they drift off halfway through, you're like, you don't like it anymore. And that had kind of put me off things in the past and also yeah, just their actual kind of feedback as well. And so not having that, I was just able to to kind of really follow my own ideas to, to the very end. And I think a lot of stuff that has turned out to be other people's favorite stuff on this record is stuff that wouldn't have been on there because the demos made no sense. But I kind of knew where they were going. Mm. So it was that thing of kind of knowing the process and knowing that I'm like, I know this sounds stupid now, but it will be good in like two weeks. Um, and stuff, all of that stuff kind of fell off records in the past. So being able to really dig into that and have time to get things right was was amazing. And I think this is the the record I've I've written the most of completely on my own as well. Because I, I co-write with my brother a lot, and he <clears throat> he basically realised that I'd forgotten how to finish songs on my own because we lived together. So we just bounced ideas back and forth. And I took something to him at the very beginning of the process. And he just, yeah, he just said no. And I was really angry for a little bit. I was like, dude, I need you to help. I'm on a very tight deadline here. So would you say this is a lot closer to what you envisaged it to be at the start? This, I mean, the sound of this record, because I, I produced 90% of it as well. There's three tracks that Troy Miller did, and there's additional production on one track from Dan Day, who's part of, part of Slang, which is awesome. Well, I'll check it out. Um, but the, yeah, I kind of produced most of it on my own so it's very much just me in a room just doing what I do and that's the other thing that I I tried to really a kind of push myself but also play to my to my strengths more I think I've tried to play other people's games in the yeah. past I've tried to play like radio games and I tried, I mean, this time I was like I'm not doing this anymore I'm just going to do exactly what I do to the best of my ability and that led to some interesting change I feel like the the vocally this album is by far the best thing I've ever done. So you, you've had quite a long and successful career. What, what's really stood out in that career that's kind of changed your direction or changed your music? I mean, in terms of what, what stands out the most to me is that I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still doing it. And I'm, yeah, I'm still selling out tours. I mean, it's, in, it's amazing to be, to be allowed to do this job. And it is, it's like a privilege. And being... Yeah, being allowed to do it for... I've been on the road for nearly 12 years. It's incredible. So you've been, you've been called in the media a kind soul, instantly likeable, and something of a marvel, all of which I agree with. I am a bastard. <laughs> but how, how would you describe yourself? I have absolutely no idea. I just... I don't really do anything but work. <laughs> I kind of just, I'm pretty much just a kind of music touring machine. I'm a dad. That takes up a huge amount of kind of brain space because obviously that changes everything instantly. I've got a six-year-old son, so that's that's quite a defining kind of thing in my brain as to kind yeah. of who I am now. How are you finding touring while while having a family? It's it's harder, but also it's a complete necessity because it's basically yeah. It's like if you if you like food and you like toys, <laughs> then you have to be okay with me touring. So there's something I, I quite like is that you, you starred in the, in the West End production of American Idiot. Yeah, that was a curveball that I threw myself. What, what was it like being in the West End? Was, is that something you consider doing again? 
if the right part comes up, I mean, that was kind of perfect. It was like the perfect stepping stone. Because I was thinking, because I was, I was acting before I was doing music. I was kind of, I was in, I did quite a lot of Shakespeare as a child, bizarrely. And I was, kind of came from that into music. And then something just switched as I started getting a bit older. I was like, if I, if I don't try and do this now, I'm just never going to do it. And it would be like this kind of unexplored door. So I decided to kind of start looking into it. And then as soon as I even started looking into it, a really old friend got back in touch. Weirdly enough, we were in my kind of first band together. And we were essentially a Green Day covers band. And he rang me saying he's in the Green Day musical and they need someone to play a character called Johnny who's a Californian heroin addict, um, tries to kill himself, like really br quite a brutal part, but he plays guitar and sings, and he was like, would you be up for doing it? So that's quite a serious role. Would you, how would, what would you say are the differences between the musical stage and the theatrical stage? Main difference is that if you're, if you're acting, if you're playing a character, then the audience doesn't exist. So that is the biggest difference, because my shows are massively interactive. Like it's very much me and the crowd working together to make something beautiful. That's the plan. It's, and I'm, for actually this tour particularly, I've been, I've had the crowd doing like up to three separate parts and then I've been harmonizing. I've got another part that kind of weaves through all of them. So I'm harmonizing with the whole crowd who are all doing different things. And it's, it's so much fun. And that obviously you can't do if they don't exist. I, mean, I think that makes a really good, um, a really good stage present. What would you say is your favorite crowd interaction that you've had? On, the, on any, any I mean, I love being heckled. I really do. I find it is that is what makes the shows different from each other is what the crowd give me to work with. Yeah. And yeah, I've, I've had some spectacular things shouted at me in the past from like bizarre song requests, which I've tried to do. Like I played the Baywatch theme tune because someone shouted. Out. I was like, "Joe, that's a great theme tune. Let's have a go at that." And yeah, I've done all kinds of bizarre things. It's just so much, it's so much fun kind of letting them know that you're willing to kind of try stuff and experiment and going into that kind of, I mean, it's, it's not, it's not jazz because musically it's not jazz at all, but in terms of that kind of doing things on the fly and massively improvising, I think people feel in a way that they, you, it's not even, it's not even something they can describe, but it's just the fact that they can tell that I'm making stuff up. I mean, I did a thing where quite near the end of the set, I was like, what haven't I played that you wanted to hear tonight? And they all shout out different songs. And I'd be like, okay, what's that? That was, that was Gone in the Morning. That was that song. That was that. And I was like, okay, hang on. Some of those are in the same tuning. What if I just make up a medley yeah. and kind of segue them together because I could come out of the chorus into that. And I could have did it in my head and then did it and the energy in the room of them knowing that I was completely making something up is, is really special. It's, uh, yeah, I would say it's almost humanizing, isn't it? You, know, you, you, you lose that aspect of kind of being a bit of a stage robot almost. Oh, I definitely, I haven't done the same show twice this tour at all. I have done that in the past. I have done, I mean, I've experimented with all kinds of things. I've done tours where I've been determined to never say the same thing twice which is quite an interesting challenge, and it kind of led to massive ups and downs, because some shows were better for it, and other yeah. shows were worse, because it was like, I couldn't think of anything to say. So I've kind of settled for like, I found like a really good middle ground between improvising and, and having a solid set list. Yeah. Um, so what's new for Newton? Like, what, what's on the horizon for you? Well, there's all kinds of things. I did, uh, did a bunch of um, kind of written to spec tracks for, for a film that's coming out relatively soon, I can't tell you what it is or when it is because I'm not allowed. But it's quite, I mean, that was an amazing thing for me, like creatively to be given these bizarre briefs. So one was like a track that had to sound like a broken music box in a misty forest with like creepers creeping along the floor. And as a musical starting point, I was like, this is awesome. I am so in. I did almost all of them in one day. Because the guy sent me like a bunch of briefs expecting me to come back with one. Yeah. I came back that afternoon with four. And he was like, dude, when did you, 
did you have these already? I was like, no, I did them just now. Well, there's a studio in my house, so I can work. I can work really fast, and I do go a bit crazy in there. What would you say is the weirdest request you've had? Can you put a ukulele up my bottom? That's probably the weirdest request I've had on stage. I didn't. I wasn't in anywhere where it would have been acceptable. Amsterdam, Bangkok. My favourite question to end interviews is, can you just describe for me your perfect Sunday? My perfect Sunday? I'd probably, it's probably been relatively similar today. Which it wasn't a Sunday, but if it was a Sunday, it would have been perfect. I woke up, I made pancakes, I've got a gig. Perfect. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Pleasure. <laughs> Thanks, man.